And this is Weaponized. Weaponized. Because we've gone there, because we're in the uncomfortable territory for me of all of this stuff, um, I, I, I do want you to talk about a, a, a term that you guys really coined um, that, that is so interesting to me because of your background in as a scientist, you know, the hitchhiker effect, the idea that when people have these experiences that many report that there is some sort of after effect or an effect that follows them for some time. And we're not just talking lore, you know, talking over a campfire. We're talking very serious life consequences physically and mentally to people who are heroic for our country and have had problems. And 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 you have studied this. You know, people say, you know, they want to study different things about UFOs. I'm going to always call them UFOs. UAP, cool. But UFOs just looks cooler. So UFOs. That there are trackable, traceable, biological implications to being in close proximity to the UAP or UFO. And you guys did a lot of study that OSEP did extensive study on the biological negative, even within the brain of human beings. I don't know if it goes as far as into the genetics or DNA, but there were things you could trace and track that you can talk about. So the hitchhiker effect. Break it down for me, you guys. What is that? Well, <clears throat> I, I guess the poster child for the hitchhiker effect is, is the guy we call Axelrod. And as George has said, maybe his name is going to change in the next 12 years. Or come, <laughs> come out is what you mean. He exactly, wrote it yeah. in the book as Axelrod. His name is going to come out. Yeah, so, so I remember um, sort of being uh, right beside Axelrod um, on the Skinwalker Ranch in July of... 2009, I was standing right beside him and, um, you know, he was talking to his wife and his wife was sort of saying that there was weird stuff happening in the house. Um, and this was uh, right after Axel Rod's experience on the, on the property. But to cut a very long story short, what, what, what happened was um, when Axel Rod and his two compadres who were on the property, they had these very intense experiences on the property. They flew back home to the East Coast and they went to their, their homes. And Axelrod's uh, family started um, experiencing all these uh, paranormal events. You know, their teenage sons would wake up and these black shadows would be standing, hovering over their bed, sort of in a very threatening way. They would uh, wake up to go to the bathroom and they'd see these sort of black objects that would be in the hallways that were obviously black objects. They weren't sort of a trick of the light. And then one night sort of uh, after this whole thing started erupting, um, Axelrod's wife was just turning off the lights in the kitchen um, that, that was overlooking their backyard. And uh, out of the corner of, the, of her eye, she caught a movement down in the, in, in the backyard and she saw this ridiculous mythic semi-mythical creature of a of a what looked like a wolf standing on its hind legs leaning against a tree in the in her backyard and she was looking and she looked away she looked back it was still there i mean it was it was like something out of mythology um that she was looking at and she i mean she just turned off the light and went to bed i mean she was freaked out to the extent that she never said anything to her family about okay. this. So, so there's just tons of this, right? Tons right. of this idea of a hitchhiker effect that it comes and like a virus infects your family and loved ones and it follows you after like you go to the ranch or whatever, B the bigger picture people encounter, close encounters with UFOs, this hitchhiker effect, okay? But like, okay, ghost stories. I don't know these people, I don't believe it. Let's just say that's that's my perspective, right? Right. I'm just like, ghost stories, cool story, don't care. But you had actually physical, traceable, biological things that could be directly linked to these UFO or UAP encounters. C can you talk about any of that, the things that well, you know you can trace? Yeah, just to kind of finish off the, 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 that primary kind of example, um, the two sons were, were in, in, the, uh, in the room uh, near the backyard on the Saturday morning following her sighting. And uh, one of them looks out, and they see this upright creature, wolf man, wolf, wolf creature, running quickly. Well, actually, it was standing still, looking at them in a threatening way. 
and then it took off heading for the tree line, um, kicking up leaves as it went. On, on two legs? On two legs. Okay. So Anatomically impossible. So, so the, uh, the whole idea that, you know, a dog, I mean, you, you see dogs in the circus getting up on their two legs and sort of tottering around. This thing was moving fluidly at speed, kicking up leaves as it went. The family went out into the, into the yard afterwards and they went over to the tree line where they had seen this and there were these obvious large claw marks on the tree trunk. Okay, so was this a sort of a, a trick of the mind or was or kick, for, kicking up the leaves? Or for an intelligence agency playing some sort of MK Ultra mind game on our intelligence agency folks. I mean, but what, whatever it was, it was leaving uh, physical traces in the environment and that, that's sort of a key part of this whole thing. So we studied this, this so-called hitchhiker effect, and it was so common over time. Um, you know, we started tracking back to the original NIDS days, and we found that in some cases, you know, I remember, um, you know, my wife remarking that, you know, there were people in the bedroom that sort of walking, walking around the bedroom. Robert Bigelow reported um, a lot of activity in his household. George Knapp had been on the property, and... I'm not going to deny weird shit. So, you know, look, weird shit always happens rather than so, sitting with you guys. So the bottom line is that that we we um, investigated a lot of these people who had had the hitchhiker effect, and we found a small number of them were coming down with autoimmune um, diseases: Hashimoto's, thyroiditis, Sogren's syndrome, lupus. Um, there was Graves' disease. There were there were other autoimmune diseases. And from a, uh, a relatively small cluster of people who had endured this hitchhiker effect, um, there was a, an interesting spike or cluster. It was of, disproportionate? N is very small. So the, the N is pretty small. Um, so I would hesitate from uh, publishing a scientific paper about this. But the observations were that um, the hitchhiker effect in many cases was associated with a flare-up of autoimmune diseases in one or more people in that household. Now, one, one other thing about the, uh, about the hitchhiker effect is that it was not confined to Skinwalker Ranch. Um, we had other um, UFO close encounter um, experiencers um, who had family and who had exactly the same kind of thing. They went back to the East Coast after experiencing very dramatic effects in, say, Oregon, uh, is one example that we put in the book, uh, Skinwalkers at the Pentagon. And they went back to the East Coast and paranormal stuff flared up in the house. So it's not only a Skinwalker Ranch specific phenomenon, it's specific to certain intense close encounter effects. And by the way, that family, the hitchhiker family that we're, he was talking about, the kids would see orbs uh, floating around in, the, in their rooms inside the house. There were tricks where the dog ends up on the roof. I mean, there was a lot of really it strange like stuff. the original stuff from Skinwalker yeah. Ranch, the same people, same kind and of the, stuff. And 13 years later, it's still going on for that family. 13 years so, later. So, but it's, it's, you have so many examples of this right. that, that I'm aware of that, that you've tracked it. You've kind of named it this term because it's just something you couldn't ignore. It, you know, even if my mind can't accept it, you can't ignore it as, as a reporter, as a scientist, that's happening. So, but there's more, right? There, there's specific things known about the negative biological effects on the human body if they get into close proximity, often cases, with it with an actual ufo Can let me you... let me preface this too because we just had this new report come out a couple of weeks ago from odni in which they said we haven't found any cases where anybody was been harmed by being in proximity to a ufo and which suggests maybe they should get in their car drive to the dia and look because you guys found a lot of cases yeah and 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 <clears throat> within the database of uh we we call it the data warehouse because uh, Jacques Vallée designed this Capella data warehouse to house multiple uh, subsets of databases. So there were 11 separate databases within this data warehouse that was transmitted to the Defense Intelligence Agency in late 2010 
as a specific deliverable of the OSAP program. But within that database, there is a subset of medical injury cases that um, OSAP slash BAS investigated. Um, you know, there are two examples that I can think of right off, off the, uh, the book. Number one is um, a guy in Georgia whose son was outside playing um, outside. He was staying in the tent sort of with, uh, with some neighbors and um, the dog started barking outside. He went outside to check it out and he saw this large triangular object hovering above the house and he was, um, you know, kind of really intrigued. It was silent, it was low, and it was a classic black triangle, sort of a um, hundred, it was like a hundred yards, a hundred yards, a hundred yards, so a very, very large object. Um, and it was, uh, it had lights on it. Like f flat, flat, or like pyramid in shape triangle? Well, it was a, a, a from his perspective, it was all he could see was the underneath of Triangle it. Triangle from angle of observation, we would so, say. Yeah. I mean, it was it was difficult to tell that from from his angle, but anyway, he tried taking uh, taking some uh, photographs of it with his cell phone, and I mean, it was black against a black background, so it was obviously not going to come out very well. So he decided to light up the bottom of it with the flashlight that he had. So he had a powerful flashlight. So he went in into his house, grabbed it, and the thing was still there when he came out, and he lit up the bottom of it with, with a pretty powerful flashlight. And almost instantly, this blue, um, intense blue light came uh, from one of the apex of the triangles and blinded him to the extent that he turned around and crouched and sort of, you know, uh, to protect himself, it blinded him completely. But <clears throat> even when he was crouching, he felt this burning on his neck. So he ran inside and sort of watched it from the vantage point of the house. And the blue, the, this blue beam that had hit him was, uh, he, he described it as, I think, a foot or a couple of foot in, in diameter. But it was a very intense light. So, you know, he watched it and then this object took off really quickly. Um, there were other objects associated with it. He felt not good. He woke up. His whole neck was really badly sunburned. His back was badly sunburned. He had a metallic taste in his mouth, had a severe headache, felt nauseous. He was interviewed by, um, by people from OSAP. Okay, so uh, the DIA, the, you actually got to interview this guy and get into some of his medical Yeah, we records. took photographs of his sunburn and uh, took a lot of blood samples. And, oh, you were right there? Yeah, right after I mean, we, well, we had two... Uh, MD, PhD physicians who were on call, basically, um, that were able to luckily uh, travel to different places in the United States to investigate these kind of medical injuries. Wow, you got to get the report. It's right. got to get to you. You got to get there quick where you still got the summary. And then right. follow it. And then follow, and follow it, it over yeah. long term. And, and, wow. and he was followed over multiple blood samples over, over many, many months. He came down with a litany of different uh, medical issues, including a phenomenon called Castleman's disease, which, in, which involves sort of these spontaneous eruptions of tumors, but they were not malignant tumors, but eventually, you know, he sort of began to recover. And so he was followed over many, many months, over a year, um, but the fact is he was his health went really downhill after this event. There were other cases in, in our database that were even more so where, you know, people had came down with cancer. They had, uh, you know, uh, after these close encounters with UFOs. So the idea that, you know, there's no physical or pathological or medical injury cases associated with UFOs um, is counteracted by the database that's sitting on the shelves at the Defense Intelligence Agency as we speak.